Good afternoon all. Um, I spent the weekend, the bank holiday weekend, so it was a three-day weekend, building this, which is um, all analog audio circuitry. So it's all op amps. Uh, these are regular sort of 741 style op amps, although they're, they're duals. Uh, these are transconductance op amps. So these are working as uh, voltage controlled amplifiers. And I've built six identical or very similar uh, channels. So these are dual chips so that you've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six channels. And I've built uh, six different filters. So this is all part of the vocoder circuitry because this bit I hadn't actually played with yet. And I wanted to just try this out and see what the effect was. So I'm putting some uh, music through uh, here. This is the input uh, socket. There's a little unity gain buffer amplifier there because this uh, amplifier has to drive all six filter inputs. So I wanted a little bit of amplification. I didn't want to drive that directly from my PC. I'm going to pump some uh, copyright free music from YouTube's library through there. The output has another little uh, buffer amplifier, but this is kind of special because you have to invert every alternate channel. There is a reason for that. I won't go into it now because I'm just going to uh, play around with this for a bit, but the final amplification stage comes out and goes into my active speaker here. So if you look at the uh, vocoder circuitry, all I've built are six of these filters with different capacitor values primarily. Uh, the resistor values don't vary much. I think this one here, there is a little bit between the, um, the six filters uh, so that they uh, are precisely tuned to the frequencies that the designer originally wanted. Um, this is the VCA. It's a an OTA, it's an operational transconductance amplifier or a transconductance op amp. Um, I've put this transistor in, which is supposed to convert from a voltage to current control. And uh, my pots are these pots here so that we can vary the voltage a little bit on this emitter and therefore the current flowing into the OTA. Now I've turned all these pots so that they're slightly on. If you turn them too far, then everything seems to distort so obviously the voltage is going into these transistors. You can see the six transistors, uh, sort of see them laid out down there. It can't be too high. If they go too high, it just seems to distort. I don't know why. Now, if I put my finger on uh, plus 12 volts and just touch these input resistors, we can get some sort of microphonic sound. So there's the top filter, about 1.5 kilohertz. Next one, next one. and then the bottom one. So you can hear the frequencies that these are tuned to. So uh, let's start putting some music through this thing. So this is the uh, Naval Academy March. It's by the United States Naval Academy Band. Let's start that going. And uh, I'll start. So you can hear that the music's coming through in a fairly narrow band, 500 hertz to 1.5 kilohertz. Let's take these middle ones out. So all we've now got is the 500 hertz one at the bottom, and this very high, well, very high, uh, 1500 hertz up at the top. There isn't much coming through there. About 1200 hertz. Uh, one kilohertz, about 800 hertz, I don't know, 650 or something like that, and 500 hertz. But if I turn these pots too far, let's do this one, it goes into hideous distortion. So you've got to work it within a range where it's off to on, but not too high where it all distorts. I go too high. Yes, that's pretty nasty, but there, that's fine. That's just coming through the filter intact. So let's turn all these on again. And there's our sound somewhere between 500 and 1500 hertz. Now, in the finished vocoder, there are 14 frequency bands. Uh, 12 of them are these bandpass sort of notch filters 
the bottom one is a low pass filter and the top one is a high pass filter. Um, I've only got space on this quadruple breadboard to put two more filters even if I wanted to build them. They take ages to build because you've got to find all these components and they're different for each filter. So it took me pretty much two days to put all this on the breadboard. Um, I could add a couple more filters but even then they don't go very high in frequency. The top filter uh, or the one below the um, high pass filter is actually only centered on about or well, something less than five kilohertz. So this is a range really for encompassing the uh, frequency ranges for speech because after all the vocoder is a speech to music kind of processor. And uh, in the finished unit these filters here which are the ones I've built uh, all 14 of them are duplicated for the speech analysis section. So the speech comes into 14 filters, split into 14 bands. Um, and then the, the level of that is, is determined here by this rectifier and smoothing uh, circuitry. And then that DC level, well, it's a, it's a varying level, varying with the amount of speech in that band is used to open and close the uh, voltage controlled amplifier to let the same frequency of music from another source through to the output. So if I wanted to build the whole vocoder on these breadboards, I'd probably need uh, three or four of these quad breadboards. I suppose it could be done. It would just be a colossal amount of work though. So I did this breadboard layout because my um, construction of this project on these proto boards had kind of stalled because I keep changing my mind on quite how I want to lay these op amps out. And whether or not I want to deviate from the original design and start using dual op amps or even quad op amps because there's a significant saving in space using quad op amps. And I was kind of interested in how the layout of these filters actually worked in practice. It's hard to do here. I suppose I could have done it on some sort of CAD, but I thought, well, why not build the thing and have a play with it and try it and see if there's any issues with it. And I'm glad I have because um, certainly I've noticed... Uh, you know, this thing about not raising this voltage on the transmitter emitter too much, otherwise it goes into distortion. It's worth uh, testing all that stuff out. So I'm hoping that uh, having breadboarded uh, a fair chunk of this vocoder uh, all laid out open like this, that's kind of informed me on where I go uh, with the construction of all this stuff on these little um, prototyping boards. I hope that's the case. I certainly enjoyed uh, the couple of days it's taken me to lay all this out and uh, put all the interwiring on and uh, make it actually work. And then, of course, just playing with it and tweaking these uh, controls to raise and lower the amounts of each of the signals uh, at these dif different frequencies through to the output. It's been a lot of fun. I hope that pushes the vocoder project forward. Cheerio.